Boom. Uh, they'll turn on transcription as well. Awesome. I can find that button. If not, I think, oh, it's already turned on. Okay, that's why that's maybe okay. I don't, don't see the button <laughs> for it. So this is the Metrics Models Working Group. It is uh, January 17th. I had to look at my computer 18th, clock. I think yeah. for some of us. So um, welcome, welcome, welcome. We have a small little group today. Um, I will go ahead and share my screen. We can go over the agenda. Awesome. Um, I think all of us have put our names in, but if anybody else comes, we'll drop the, the meeting minutes in there for them. Right um, the first one, Matt was asking if we can move back to Google Docs for these minutes, because it's even when we were, uh, Matt and I were trying to open this together earlier and I couldn't get in. And if he's not here, like just to try to get people access to this doc, because it's on the um, University of Nebraska Omaha. So we wanted to pose that question again, is if is this something we can move back to Google Docs? Um, Lane, I think you're the only one who can maybe give us a, a sense of whether or not folks can access Google Docs in China. I know that's uh, I think uh, I think it's okay to move to Google Docs. Okay. No problem. All right. And I know I know that reason that we're using the SharePoint is because there was some some blocking of Google Docs at one point, but you think it's okay now? No, I think it's okay. Right. Okay. So um, what I'll do then is um, I will take these minutes and um, copy these minutes into Google Doc for next time. So we keep that going. Thank you, Lang, for the context there. Thank you. But Ye Hui is not here. I'm not sure whether he could visit Google Docs. I, I think it's okay. Okay. Maybe we also just drop something in the metrics models Slack just to let everybody know we're doing that. And if somebody does not have access, they can speak okay. up. Do you think that works? Yeah, yeah, that's great. Okay, cool. We'll do that. Um, okay, so the next thing on the list was getting the one the metrics models that we've released into the website. Um, because we had quite a few that are ready to go and just haven't been published on the websites. But now that the website design is almost finished, basically finished, um, we can release those. So what I did was I opened this issue in the metrics models working group and just listed them all out. I am more than happy to post those on the website. I'm just going to take the docs that we have and put them out there um, and let everybody know when that's finished. Um, and in the future, I think. Thank you, Elizabeth. Oh, yeah, no worries. Doing that. Yeah. Totally fine. Yeah, totally fine. Because um, the process to post something on the website is a little bit different than it was in the past. Um, but I have a lot of, I've done that for a lot of, of our other metrics. So, yeah, it's totally fine. And I can document that process at some point just for whoever. Um, but for now, I think once we have, uh, I want, we wanted to, Matt and I both wanted to post this to the group. When we have a metric, a metric model that's ready for release, we're thinking that it does not need to go through any like public review because all of the metrics in there have already been vetted and developed and reviewed. And we think it's okay to just, once we think it's done, just put it out on the website. Yeah, I would agree with that. I think, I think stream, you know, a lightweight process for metrics models makes a lot of sense to me. So then I guess we could maybe just open if, if somebody has one that's ready, um, we can open it, uh, open an issue and just tag me in the issue and then I can just post it. Does that seem fair? That no? seems uh, totally fair. Okay. Right. Okay. If one is ready, open an issue and tag Elizabeth. I'll put my thing here. I'm Elizabeth and on GitHub and she will add to the website. Okay. Um, fair enough. All right, we're moving. <laughs> we're moving through this agenda so quick. I love it. The next one on here is that Don had developed a metrics model um, right here called Basic Project Health. I mean, this is based on her work at VMware. This is what they are using at VMware. So um, 
we wanted to kind of post this to the group and get some feedback. It looks like you always put in a little bit of feedback on here for us. Um, do we want to, I did also add this to the spreadsheet. So do we want to take a minute and just read through it and give some, some suggestions? Is that okay with everybody? Yes. Okay. Here's, yeah. Okay. Here, I'll drop this in chat here. Here's the link uh, to the doc that we're looking at. And I will keep the recording going just because sometimes we do have some interesting comments that come as we're reviewing stuff. So I'll just keep it going. I heard I was hearing sound and then it went quiet. Yeah, my dog was in here oh. walking around, so I oh, muted because okay. she was making a oh, lot of sorry. Fun. I was like, <laughs> like, oh, did the meeting stop? No, it was just me because she was being loud and chomping on something and I don't know, walking around with her little claws. <laughs> yeah, my little dog does like a little hoppy dance when he wants to be walked. It's pretty cute. So, um, all right, uh, Elizabeth, do you think that this metric from, or this model from Dawn is something that's ready to release, or do we, um, do we want to, I guess, review it is what you're asking? Yeah, I think we need to review it. I do see um, there's a metric right here called release cadence that we've not developed yet. So we would need to figure out what group would develop that, I guess, and where that would come from. Yeah, so the, I mean, evolution could build it, common could build it. The release cadence is, it's one of those metrics that um, it can, I, I, how can I say this? It can vary. So for example, in, in the case of Augur, we do releases formally on GitHub and there's metadata that we can gather about those releases. And I think many projects do operate that way. There are other projects that do not issue the releases on GitHub, but they issue the releases to package managers that deploy mm -hmm. the project. Uh, and, and so there's uh, a couple of places that we might need to look for that data. Does, um, so, but, but if Dawn is including it, I suspect strongly that Dawn is relying, since I know that she's using Augur, I suspect she's relying on the GitHub release information. So she opened, looks like she opened an issue to talk about that metric in the common working group here. Okay. Um, and she looks like, uh, she just wrote some high level stuff. She says she'll start working on the metric using the template and we'll track the progress in common working group meetings. Okay, so there we go. Right. Can you, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah you, it looks like Yuhui also jumped in. Okay, and she started a basic. Thing. So I guess we'll continue that in the common. Yeah, I will also, I'll go in and make a comment on that. Okay. Here's the link to that issue where that oh. about that. I can drop that in the chat. I just, uh, okay. I or did actually, you put it in the doc? I actually just went and saw it as like, okay. it's not super hard. Okay. Um, okay, so that, so essentially we will need that metric developed before we release this metrics model is that right is that our process um that is that is traditionally our process um the question the, yeah. The, yeah the, the yeah that would be the that would be the formality of it um so 
on the other on the defining this metric is a very small task um, because it's a very basic metric and I think the so I'm going to ask the question give me an action item to bring this up in common um, to see if Don intends if, uh, let's see what her doc is oh doc actually Don has drafted the release cadence um, so it'll which, there's a, comment, there's a comment on here. Yeah, I think I think I think it should go pretty fast. I'll um, okay. I think the I think the question is all right. So I'm going to make a comment on the issue. Okay about this and see if what people say. Okay. And it does help that, sh that Don is the one kind of working on that metric too. So as soon as that's developed, then it can come back to this group as, as ready to go. Yep. As soon as we release that. Okay. Um, Okay, do we want to take any other time to make comments in this basic project health metrics model doc? Do we want to, uh, what do we want to do? Or do we want to just do this offline uh, async and I think I think I think do it offline async maybe okay. at the next maybe at, I, because there'll be a common meeting before the next metric model meeting. Okay, and there'll be more context then. Yeah, okay. I think I think. Um, yeah. So in that common meeting, we'll be able to discuss this and made some choices. And I, yeah, I, I, okay. like I said, I think this is a, it's a, um, okay. That makes sense. Uh, and if, I mean, if somebody wants to go through this after the meeting or whenever before the next meeting, um, there, the link is in, of course, the, in the minutes here. Okay. You let's have this. I think uh, I'll go through it after the meeting. Sounds great. Oops. Uh, well, uh, last time, uh, in the last meeting, uh, I, uh, I think Matt uh, mentioned uh, he, he was working on some workflow. Do we have a workflow to accept or, uh, Review the proposed the new metric models, a formal workflow. A doc, any documents about? Um, that's a great question. Um, let's put this on here. Um, metrics models workflow. So you're talking about if someone has an idea for a metrics model, maybe outside the group or in this group. Like, how does that how does that flow? work yes. when we have, especially when we have ideas from other like the ospo working group for instance if they have an idea for a metrics model like how would it get back to us um i don't know that a flow has been defined i know we've talked about it um i don't know what do you what do you think leon what do you think about that process uh, so i'm not familiar with uh this uh, how metric models work but before we be uh Publish papers. You know, we have this review process. So we we, we submit and uh, we review and we revise. Maybe maybe some workflow like this. So we have a proposed. I mean, yeah. that's that's basically how it's gone so far. Um, someone has an idea, and then it goes to um, someone pulls someone volunteers to pull together a doc. Um, mm -hmm goes to a starting doc from the template and then oops we discuss in the working group for a few iterations a few meetings and then I feel like it's mostly just kind of like once we decide once the group decides that it's basically good enough to go then we go with it yes I, I agree. Okay. And then I think um, as far as like validating the the metrics model, 
I think that's at, the, at that point is when um, somebody like Compass would come in and take that model and and work with that to validate. But that would be like a separate thing, I think. Okay. Okay. Great. Yeah, we are working on it, validating the models. Yeah. Yeah. Then that we'll put this in here. Then Compass can validate release models. Okay. Great. I think the workflow uh, looks great. And we've not, I, I don't think we've gotten to the point now where um, Compass has identified something in a model that maybe should be tweaked or isn't correct. But a, presumably, if that happens, that team would come back to this group and say, hey, we have a model that's not quite right that we need to fix. And then we would fix it. I, I assume that that's, how, that's as simple as it would be. It's just for them to let us know that there's a problem or something could be better, you know, a different metric or something in a, in a model. Um, and then we would tweak it, but that hasn't uh, happened I think yet. The, so. uh, I think uh, later we will have such kind of feedback. Yeah, I think that loop is like the the main goal for that that piece. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yes. Um, actually, you know, this brings up a good point. The metrics models on our website, we don't really reference anything on the Compass website for validation, like. If you want to see this metrics model in action, click here, and it takes off to the Compass site. Is that something that would be of interest or appropriate? I don't. I don't know. I'm just. I don't have any strong feelings. I'm just throwing it out there. I, do we? Um, Yahoo's not here, so mm -hmm. um, that's. I think. I think. Uh, I think it's a good idea. I, I think we want Yahoo to feel comfortable that Compass is at a stage where he wants that, that uh, it would be, I know that, um, and it's been a month since we talk, so I don't know, yeah. and, and I know they were still working on, working out some of the, you know, it's a new system, working out some of the bugs and stuff, so I, I think it's a good idea, conceptually, but before we do it, I would want Yahoo to sign off on it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just to make sure that it's yeah. That uh, he's comfortable that it's at a state in a state where that's like gonna it, it's gonna be good, um, where you know because we we don't want to do it until Yahoo is comfortable that uh, Compass will reflect positively um, in exactly the way that he wants it to. But I think it's excellent so far, but I know he was still working through you know a few of the little things yeah. that happen with new software and. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't want to put it in a position where it's it's out there and then it's not in the state that Yahoo is comfortable with. Right. And he would have to tell us what that link would be anyway, I think. Like, I, I wouldn't presume to try to find one. Like, I would assume that he would tell us where to go. Yeah. Yeah. That, it is like when I when I've looked at Compass, it's been pretty like, it's actually the navigation is pretty well laid out. You can okay. see those are the metric models. And, okay. Um, so linking as long as, and I'm sure the links are stable. I think, I think it should, I think actually the link is pretty easy to find. I, I, okay. I, just, I think there are, no, there I can put a link here. Yeah. I think there were just a few UI things, um, in terms yeah, of navigation they were working out. through. Yeah. Okay. I just, I, yeah, I just don't want to promote it without you who he's signing off and saying that he's comfortable with that right now. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, we can discuss next time when your play is here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anything else we want to talk about with the flow? Man, I really like the idea that hey, these metrics exist. So if we build a metrics model, we can just release it. I think that makes a ton of sense. I don't think there's a need for high level bureaucracy. That. Yeah. So, um, uh, I think it's a great decision, great idea. And this part, this proposed idea, that can come from anywhere, but this group would be the one to really develop those metrics models, right? I mean, I well, yes, but I I think I, like if somebody want if somebody wants to propose a metrics model, I, I think this group probably would be the group to review and approve the publication. 
I, okay. I think it's the same thing that you're saying. So yeah. So even if another group kind of got it started, like we would be the ones to finish it and publish and sign off on it. Yeah. Or okay. like if yes. they did it, yes, if they did it like as a pull request, then we could get feedback. That, yeah. that would probably be the ideal. Like if evolution wants to create a metric model, um, they just create a PR into our repo and do it that way. Now we can do it asynchronously as I think yeah, that would work well. Okay. From any working group. Why did PG to everyone to WG? Okay. Yeah, I think that makes the most sense. All right, well, let's go ahead and move on uh, to the next thing on here, which is the OSPO working group goals. So um, the OSPO working group is, as you all know, the um, formerly known as the value working group, and now it focuses on the needs of OSPOs. So in the last meeting was a very large meeting. We had like 22 people in that meeting. Um, these were kind of some of the goals that surfaced. So Matt just wanted to bring it to this group um, to share because it does involve a lot of the metrics models work. So, um, I think that back to your point earlier, Liang, about um, the workflow, this is a prime example because the OSPO working group meeting, they're going to probably have a lot more ideas for metrics models that are pertinent to them. But as far as like actual development, like that group is so large, I don't know that they will be equipped to actually do the work of developing the model itself. So that might just get thrown back to to this working group, which I guess is okay, <laughs> since that's why we're here. So um, just wanted to kind of um, surface that for everybody. Um, so they kind of know like that there may be some more ideas coming from that group. Um, these are the things that they're important, important to them. Okay. Um, this part right here is of particular interest, um, defining the business value, um, which is something that um, we could maybe think about in this group also of like, um, how does this metric model help the business that's running the OSPO? Is a, that seemed to be of, of great interest. So um, something that we can think about a little bit more because we currently don't really address that anywhere. I don't think. Um, so, yeah. Taxonomy and open source company metrics. Because this is very much internal to the businesses. So, What's um, it's it's a little bit of a circular problem because, for example, the metrics themselves are kind of core indicators that companies do look at. But there, are, there are I'm certain what this is getting at is there are different motivations that companies have for looking at these metrics, and those are probably like what how value creation is defined probably. I'm certain it varies based on the business model of the open source company, right? Um, and one question I would have is whether or not that is going to be something that companies regard as proprietary. Like, is there a strategy to build value in a way that is not something they want to talk about? That's, that's, and it's, I'm not, and I, I think we should pursue this. I think. My only concern is if um, are we going into are we going are we getting the corporate strategy areas that might be less likely to get discussed, and I think the only way we can find that out is to head down the road. Yeah, I think that makes sense. So yes, okay. I'm saying yes with that qualification. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, so these are here for us just to um, have as our reference and things to think about as we help support that other working group. Any other comments on this? <clears throat> oh, all right. I think I think it's cool. So business value is important, and uh, I totally agree with Xion that. Um, different companies have different uh, uh, motivations. So is it possible that there are some um, 
I don't know, some general or, or common business models, something like that. So we can start. Yeah, I, that's a really good point, Lane. Um, uh, for example, I when I think about Red Hat, I think their model is clearly that they provide support and services for core infrastructure uh, and release software that's based on open source mm -hmm. using that. I, I think there are other companies um, that leverage a lot of open source software. And so their strategy is trying to choose the projects to support because those projects are part of their product offering. Mm -hmm. Those are two, like, I guess, classes of business model that come immediately to mind. And I'm sure there are others. Sean, reiterate yeah, that can... first one, please. The, the first one was a sort like it's a, a services and support model where for core infrastructure. So which is like sales and services around open source projects or yeah, open source like software. Like, well, like Red Hat Enterprise Linux, I think is a classic example where you know, I'm a company. I'm gonna run Linux, but I I need it. I need a I need like a version of Linux that somebody has defined as stable, which means it's you know 18 to 24 months behind the current kernel, but it's highly stable. And if I have a problem, I can call them. Um, Red Hat. That's that's a big part of Red Hat's business model. There are other firms. When I, I one that comes to mind is Indeed.com that uses a lot of open source software and they identify the projects that are the most critical uh, in their infrastructure and find ways to support those projects. So their business model is they have a product that is an online website for helping people find jobs. And they recognize that some of their business relies on certain open source projects. So they manage a portfolio of open source projects and elect to support certain open source projects in specific ways. Yes. And one of the example I found is uh, Renaissance is a uh, chip manufacturer. They are supporting open source projects so that those projects can uh, run on their chips and companies adopting open source need those chips. So it's like a triangular model. Um, so, so is that something along the lines of um, they build a project. The open source project is directly tied to. So, so, so this is like Zephyr style end of the wire kind of stuff that you're talking about. Uh, so it's like a chip manufacturer who wants uh, open source project to run on their chips. Like for example, some open source cannot run on the uh, IoT small IoT devices, so they are right. supporting. So they are developing the IoT devices, but they are supporting the open source project by contributing code add to them so that they can run on their chips, on their machines. Okay, that makes that makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. So I, I think there's like, that would, if you're gonna put that on the list, that's uh, maybe I'll... So it's like a hardware. Uh, it's a hardware uh, yes. software. Um, yes. Uh, hardware software. So it's, it's a hardware company contributing to an open source project That's to ensure that it runs on their hardware. Yes. So to Ling's point, yeah, it looks like there's at least three specific business models that we can identify off the top of our heads. <laughs> I think it's a really good topic to start. Yeah. Maybe doing some research. Or uh, even the fourth model that comes to my uh, mind that is similar to service, it's purely just consultancy around open source, purely just consultancy. Consistency, is that what you said? Con consultancy. Con consultancy. Yeah. Consultancy. yeah. yeah. I know um, some companies, I don't know how common this is, but I have heard of companies um, using open source projects also as a way to um, recruit new employees. Uh, so more of like a pipeline, like if there's a, a bit of open source that's 
central to the core of their business, then folks who contribute to that, then they kind of uh, have a, so a pipeline I, for hiring people. I, I know this is a fact, but this is not purely a model they adopt that they especially recruit and uh, so they are highly involved in the open source and in that process, they recruit people. It's not just they align their business just for recruiting people from open source. Yeah, that maybe is like a byproduct. Yeah. Yes. Okay, this is a great conversation. This is a really good start. Um, and Sean and, and Matt and myself are also in that OSPO working group too. So we can be the bridge between as well. Vinod, obviously, of yeah. course. I think it met, it met last week, right? Yeah. Yeah, I was there. Yeah. Yeah, last week I was on an intense travel journey. Yeah. Missed almost everything. That's okay. It's all right. Um, okay, so do we want to move on to the next topic? And this was um, also just something Matt wanted to bring up was for us to think about how we communicate this work to the world, um, you know, is it through blog posts and conference talks? And we do have a communications working group that has some folks interested in doing some blog post writing or are, are looking for topics to write about. So maybe this is one of the metrics models would be something for them to write about or anyone in this group, if you all want to write some blog posts about a certain metrics model or um you know just trying to trying to spread the word about these um as we do with like the dei badging initiative for instance um, folks have given talks at open source conferences all over um so if there's anyone that's interested in kind of promoting this and this also just as an aside kind of um aligns with uh the idea that was brought up in the community meeting today about the chaos ambassadors um, that help kind of spread the word about chaos throughout the land <laughs> through various conferences and things. So um, maybe it kind of all goes together. But um, yeah, uh, just wanted to surface this as something that we could think about in this group. If there are folks who enjoy that kind of work and wanted to take any of this on, by all means, like, yeah. have it. you know, how can we support you, I guess, is the thing. Yeah, I, mean, I think for me, it's like, sure, I'd love to, but I need, I actually need somebody to help me promote stuff. So. So I guess I would welcome anyone who is willing to promote what we're doing here. So yeah, just throwing that out there. <laughs> Something that we, we probably want to think about as a group just to, to do more of that work, um, just to keep it in the you know, in the in the spotlight, so to speak, um, this, this seems like the way, you know, like chaos is kind of shifting more towards this implementation, this higher level thinking of how metrics come together. And so um, that's something that we'll probably want to do more of is, is just promote the work that this group does specifically. So yeah, just think about it. If there's anything in there that's of interest to you and you want to take that on, feel free <laughs> to do that. <laughs> I think it's really important to, to 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 show the world what we are doing, and and it's a lot of work. I I don't know. Yeah, it is. Um, and maybe it's something that like you know people pair up together, or we you know write it as a group. I know that the app ecosystem working group has done a few blog posts together um, as a group effort, and then they all. Um, put themselves as the authors, and I think that would also be fine. Um, they do some work on opensource.com, so if that's where we think that we might want to post something, great. You know, we can get that ball rolling. If we want to just post it on our Chaos blog, that's also fine. Or any other ideas that you all have about where we could could post some things, um, and if if that's you know something that you want to do, I'll put that in here as an idea, maybe opensource.com, oops, chaos blog. Like maybe the to-do group, I don't know if there, you know, would be anything there that we could post something. Yeah. 
Uh, maybe whenever we release a model, we can post it in a to-do group as a marketing that, okay, here's a model that we have released, maybe interest to the companies in their Slack channel. So people will do take a look in that. Yeah. That's a good idea, Vinod. Yeah, for sure. And if anybody is looking for a topic um, to speak at a conference, this is a great topic is to pick a model and look at it and really dive deep into it. So All right. Well, we have about 10 minutes left. Um, I'm going to stop sharing. Do we have anything else to go over today? No. Tonight? I, I don't. But I'm open to others who want to discuss things. I'm in a hurry. And I, I don't have yeah. more things to discuss. Vinod, do you got anything on your mind? Nups. <laughs> I'll, um, I'll enjoy my 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I love organizations that do not feel the need to fill all of the scheduled time. That's right. That's right. The right way to operate. <laughs> That's right. All right. Well, everyone have a great rest of your day, night, however. Thank and you, Elizabeth. We'll see you all later on. See Take you later. care. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.